My name is Larry Satchwell. I've done, I've done woodworking since 1975 when we needed a dining room table. I've never made a woodworking video before, and uh, this is my first attempt. I don't have a lot of great equipment, but um, I'm going to shoot this on my iPad, try to put this thing together to make sense. Today, I'm in the shop. It's very cold outside, working on a roosting nest for chickadees and other small birds. I have some old barn wood I'm going to try to put together for this project. The plans are from Cornell University, the School of Orthonthology there. Uh, so that's the basic plans I'm going to be using and hopefully we'll be able to put this together so the birds will have a place to huddle up and keep warm at night. The plans for this roosting nest call for 12 inch material. None of the barn wood I have is in 12 inch material so I'm going to cut, rough cut some and glue it together. This wood is particularly hard on saw blades. I've already wire brushed it and tried to look for all the nails and screws that might possibly be in. I've glued up some, a couple of planks here. There's actually three pieces on this. As you can see, it's very rough and that'll give us the rustic look we're going for. Here are the pieces. Two sides, a top and a bottom. Plans call for some 3 8 inch grooves to be cut in the back of this in case a downy or hairy woodpecker wants to spend the night here. I've noticed though that our woodpeckers do a very good job of holding on to this uh, 1 half inch grid hardware cloth. So I'm going to put this in the back. I've got a little, a couple little spacers there that's going to uh, hold it off the edge a little bit. In the Cornell plan, they call for grooves to be cut in 3 8 inches apart for those same woodpeckers to be able to cling to. I had these scraps left over in an attempt in a different project to flatten a wide board. I ended up I couldn't get it flat enough, so I didn't use it. So I'm just going to put these here in the front of the birdhouse in case, or roost I should say, in case our woodpecker friends would rather hook onto these pieces of wood as opposed to that hard wire. And again, I'm just going to attach these until the glue dries with some one inch staple. The plans call for these 3 8 inch roost to be placed in kind of a diagonal fashion here. I'm going to put them about 4 inches apart. stagger these so that one bird isn't actually roosting on top of the other. And I'm going to put some up high in case they really want to be warm. That'll be the warmest spot. This plan calls for no ventilation except for a couple of holes in the bottom. Now on the other side, I'm going to attempt to make these holes where they're not going to uh, interfere with the other side. So I'm going to make the dowels about uh, four inches, six inches, five inches long, something like that. We'll have to see what looks good once we get them partially together. So I'm going to put these roost in. I'll use the holes I have. I may need to change a few. See what it looks like after I get them in here. Here's what that spacing looks like. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Here's the view from the bottom and you can see that very few of them overlap each other. It looks like they have plenty of room to move around in there. So I think we're going to go with that. So I'm going to glue these in. They ended up being four and a half inches long. 
gives me about a half inch into the wood and a nice distance apart. Just using tight bond two here because in theory this is going to be a dry environment and they're really not going to need to uh, use a waterproof glue. I used waterproof glue and all the glue ups where I had to add some things. And you can see, I'm not being very careful with the glue up here, this is not going to be finished. Now I want to make sure I can take this thing apart at some time. And birds are roosting in here, I have chickens, and I know that there's going to be a need to clean this thing out and to sanitize it once in a while. So I'm just going to tack it together right now with those two inch nails. And then put some screws in it. I'm going to put this four inches from the top. I'm sorry, four inches from the bottom. And then I'm going to attach the bottom. So I'm going to attach these with two inch duck screws. This wood is very soft. It's cypress, by the way not necessary. Pre-drill. And it's not going to take a lot of screws. Maybe four. I mentioned earlier that I didn't have enough barn wood. And this wood is uh, not very flat. And as you can see, there are some gaps underneath it. The plans call for this bottom to be put inside the walls here. I think I'm going to modify this plan a little bit and cut a little longer piece so that it goes on the outside. I think because it only calls for four 3 8 inch ventilation holes that this is going to allow too much cold air in. So I'm going to cut a little larger piece and screw it to the bottom. That will also be easier to take off because the bottom is where all the bird droppings are going to accumulate. Now this is a piece of uh, shelving 1 by 12 pine they call it and since I'm screwing so close to the edge here I am going to drill a pilot hole for this otherwise, otherwise it's going to split. And I'm not going to nail this first. Those nails are just uh, 18 gauge nails so they're going to be very easy to pull out should I need to take this thing apart. But once I get one screw started here, I can screw the rest on. Now this is where you have to use your own discretion. The plans call for a hole anywhere from an inch and a half to two to three inches depending on which birds you want to exclude. Well I want to include the hairy and the downy woodpeckers and in looking up their nesting requirements it said they needed a hole an inch and a quarter. So I'm not exactly sure what other birds might go in here. I don't want squirrels. I'm going to put a two and a half inch hole and I, I'm sorry a one and a half inch hole and I'm going to use the spade bit. So I'm going to center it where it needs to be Got my drill. Now, because I don't want this to blow out on the other side, I'm going to drill partial and then flip it over when I can see the pilot hole. And I'll finish drilling on this side. Alright, I have a little 4x4 four four piece here. I want to kind of make sure I'm going to put it in the right spot, so I'm going to center it over there. And I'm just going to lightly mark it here. And that 
where I should be able to get it started. Now, I'm not going to try to hold this piece. I'm going to clamp it because this is going to twist. That feels a lot better. So I'm going to get this hole started. Flip it over and drill from the other side. All right, so I'm going to line up the top here. And this board again, these boards aren't exactly flat, but again, just four screws here, and I think that'll help line things up a lot. Okay, I've run into a bit of a problem on this side, as you can see, because of this old wood being twisted, this is not exactly lining up right. So I have a couple of solutions here. I could use a bar clamp and use it in the spreading position, but I don't have one of those. So I'm going to use this seat clamp and see if I can't pull it together that way. I just need this to line up on the sides. This is in a piece of fine furniture and it's not pristine wood so you're going to run into some problems like this. Alright, that seems to be lining up that way but now there's an edge here. Let's see if I can't push it back a little bit. That'll work. And now I've got it lined up so I can attach the screw. So with that, I'll add a couple of dabs of glue, and I mean just a couple of dabs because I am out. And we'll position that over the hole. I think it looks better this way. And add a couple of two-inch nails until that dries. This wood is about one inch thick, so. Now, if you've ever tried to drill brass screws in, I highly recommend doing it with a hand screwdriver. But to make the pilot hole, I've got a steel screw the same size as my brass. So I'm gonna make the pilot hole with that. And that makes a nice entry here. That makes a much easier entry here for the brass. Take your time. You don't want to strip that out. Well, here it is mounted. I put it up the way the arborist recommend. These ropes are just around the tree. So I'll monitor that, make sure it's not impeding the growth. This is one of our native trees here. This is a shortleaf pine. has quite a lean to it, but I think this is the best location for the roosting box. Here it is. It's about seven feet up. Really couldn't find any great directions on how high it should be, but it's pretty close in relationship to our other bird feeders. We have quite an active population here coming and going all day long. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and you can see it's getting full sun, so hopefully it'll warm up and heat up during the day, and that would release some, some heat in the evenings.